All right. Hello, hello. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to our um, Facebook Live under our Distinguished Speaker Series. Um, my name is Asma Wasti. Those who are new and joining us from wherever you are viewing us, my name is Asma Wasti and I run the Facebook page Webinar Accelerator. Um, my business is Accelerate Global. I help, I coach the coaches in uh, bringing audience to their business, developing clients free of cost through webinars. Webinars being the cornerstone of the marketing strategy, developing their offer and perfecting it and filling their audience, hundreds of audience, converting them into paid clients consistently month over month. And one of my favorite things to do is to get guest speakers onto our live under Distinguished Speaker Series that I've started for my Facebook page for our members to help promote them, understand them, and understand their stories. Um, and our today, our uh, distinguished speaker is Hane Newton. Hi, Hane. How are you? Hi. I'm great. Greetings from Europe. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hane is joining us from Finland, Helsinki. And we were just discussing the weather a little bit earlier uh, before getting on to this and how is it going over there versus Toronto, where we're live streaming it. So it kind of is not bad for both of us, isn't it, honey? No, yes, it's been warm and sunny. It's, it's amazing. Like the, the spring and the summer is coming. Really <laughs> it happy. is coming. I can't wait for the flowers to bloom here too. So uh, we only have 30 minutes and the purpose of the Distinguished Speaker Series has been that we get to know the person behind the, uh, the business, behind uh, the uh, the vision of the business and get to know them personally as that is so, so important, especially the stories. And I'm blown away by all the entrepreneurs that I've met so far and I've um, put them through our Distinguished Speaker Series by their stories and their courage and what they have done for themselves and what they bring for their clients. And this is what I would like to showcase on today. So we'll get to know a little bit about you, honey. <laughs> We're, you're right. Can't wait. And then, <laughs> can't wait either. And then we'll talk a little bit about your business at the farther end. So tell us, uh, where did you grow up? A little bit about your childhood. Talk us about that. Right. Uh First of all, thank you, Asma, for having me and, and reaching out to me some time ago. It's been really a pleasure. Uh, and I, I love this virtual world at the moment. And that is something good that COVID has brought to all of us. And we can actually connect with people much more easily nowadays than, let's say, two years ago to mm. all, all over the world. Well, my, um, my childhood wasn't obviously like this. <laughs> so today's kids are, are living in a totally different world. Um, uh, I was uh, born in the eastern part of Finland in very regular family, uh, living in a small town next to a bigger city. But we were like a small town family doing all different kind of things. And, and we had a summer cottage mm -hmm. uh, like 70 kilometers away from us, which was totally in the middle of forest, like in the middle of nowhere and uh, that's where I've, I've spent half of my childhood and the other half I've spent in the um, small town doing all different kind of things that my parents were passionate about it was sport and music and and acting and of course school and then the, the whole social life with our friends and relatives and, and neighbors we were a really active family in that kind of oh, wonderful sense. yes wonderful. And, and so I, I been this uh, like we were discussing with you, Asma, a bit earlier that you are like farm town girl and yeah. farm girl. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm the similar. I have uh, childhood memories that my dad was uh, sewing me this uh, this kind of army costume that my brother had, and I wanted to have that too because I was always there with the boys. I was, of course. you know, of course, yeah. Because me I, I, too. <laughs> Same. Like yeah. farm girls are like that, right? You yeah, just get exactly. it and yeah. get dirty with everybody. Yeah. Yes. So I, I wore my rubber boots, and then I went down the the guts with the to see the frogs and and collect the you know butterflies and and just chopping the wood and and doing everything with my my family, my relatives, and and so I was one of the boys, so to say. 
Oh, yes, yes. And you, I remember because our, in our conversation earlier, you said that that's what sowed the seed of, hey, there's another farm girl. So folks who are joining us, thank you so Great. much. The challenge with us is that if you don't put your name in, we won't be able to see who it is who is replying. Yeah. But I see a wow and someone else says that they're, they're also a farm girl. Let us know what your name Thanks. is. Put that in there so we know who's replying here. But awesome. So you said that that actually sowed the seed of independence and freedom and and that seed of entrepreneurship in you it did because um half of the year i would say that we were living in in the farm area where my mm -hmm. dad grew up and, and we built a summer cottage there and it was you know in the middle of nowhere in the woods at also lots of fields so it was like a, this camp that we always had mm -hmm. to do something whether in the fields or in the forest or you know taking fire foods or whatever and and I remember these summer times that when the the, uh, the wild berries were ready to pick up. So in the morning, like four or five a.m., my mom and dad left out to the the forest to pick mm -hmm. up the berries, and me and my younger brother, wow. we were left in the cottage alone. And it's like I said, it's in the woods, so there were all the bears and everything, and we were there in the woods, and and we had to wake up when we woke up. We were there a couple of hours. They left a note on a table. Yeah. At the time was no no cell phones, no electricity, <laughs> nothing like that in the summer cottage. So, yeah. so I we fend for to, yourself. So you would fend for yeah. yourself, right? And yeah. So we, we had to take care of ourselves, and and um, that kind of uh, taught us also to to take care of ourselves, but also the neighbors. And and I remember that. In our summer cadets, there was this neighbor who is a bit disabled person. And when he was walking, everyone knew him. And, and he was walking mm -hmm. to our summer cadets because we were so friendly. And, and my mm -hmm. grandparents used to live in the same place. They were friendly. And the doors were always open to, to anyone, and mm -hmm. whether we knew it or not. And, and we always served them. We were taking them as a family members, even though that we met them first time. And that also taught me to be independent, be open. Mm -hmm. And look, everyone equal. It doesn't matter what age or uh, you are, or what gender you are, or you know what's your occupation, or what whatever that is. So they oh, also yeah. told us that you know do whatever you can, what your capabilities are at the moment, whether you are a kid or an older person. Mm -hmm. And that's also uh, what we learned, me and my younger brother at the time. That you know. It's taking to be care of others, the take, take, take communal others way of, take. yes, communal yes. way of living. I agree. Yeah. And the hands-on piece of it, I agree. Thank you, Ratna. Hi, Ratna. She joined us from India. So thank you for watching us. That's that's amazing. So so that piece of it, that how you grew up, taught you to be dependent, taught you to take care of others and having that communal sense. So how did you end up going then from there? And of course, you said you'd learn different languages, different cultures, right? Being associating yeah. with others that way through. Yeah. So how did that end up going into your previous businesses where you went into tourism and event management? How did that start? move happened that is amazing. i would love to hear that piece <laughs> it's a, it all started from the farm mm -hmm. and and in the times that you know when we were living in in town and going to school and all that we um we had lots of hobbies we did different kind of sport and i was playing piano and and i was acting and singing in a choir and and I even had a club for for the uh, children in our street, and just to mm -hmm. wanted to practice my leadership skills and and <laughs> see, <laughs> and, and I wanted to bring some joy amazing. to the kids who were there in in the street. They were much younger than me, and and we just thought, okay, well, I've learned all these skills, and maybe they want to learn how to ski, or maybe they want to learn how to play this kind of game, or whatever that was and, and because they were always looking up us older people and and um, all the kids and and that's how I started this whole thing that okay what I can do in order to to um, bring joy to others but mm -hmm. also how can I benefit from that so mm -hmm. I was thinking that, that being in cross-country skiing competition and acting and 
and singing in a choir. I was learning all different things and, and different people and, and their mindset also. But how could I grow my leadership skills if I wanted to see whether I'm a good leader or not? Mm -hmm. And people always came to me asking for different kind of help. And well, because that's I, amazing. Yeah. And that's I, like amazing. I told you that yeah. I, I had known all these different people ever since I was back in the farm uh, yeah. as a little girl. I knew these uh, neighbors and relatives. And, and I continued that during my school years. Mm -hmm. And when I went um, to be an exchange student as far as, as Australia uh, mm -hmm. and later on to Germany, uh, mm -hmm. I concluded all these mm -hmm. same things there, over there as well. I wanted to learn different things and see what things I, I can do, how, how I can manage or, or will I manage and what are the lessons there to be learned. And, and throughout all these experiences that I had and the network that I had been building mm -hmm. all through my life, mm -hmm. uh, I thought that uh, uh, I've always loved the joy and, and being in a social environment, being active, and, and I was always there where something happened. So I thought, where I can use all these skills, where I can learn more? And I thought, okay, mm -hmm. well, the tourism industry offers all that sort of things. Mm -hmm. So, And I just didn't have any other option at the moment. So I thought, okay, well, let's go and give it a try. And and you ran with it. In the same path. <laughs> the same you path. ran with it. You ran with it. That's me. Yeah. And that's the code because you, you use the term joy because I wrote the code when I was doing a pre-interview before this one with you. So you said, and I always collect quotes from people around me. What, a couple of them are from you, actually. So you said you always, you should always have joy in your life right? Yes. Whatever you are doing needs to bring happiness to you. Otherwise, you won't, you won't be and things. you won't be going far in it either, right? If it doesn't bring joy to you and joy to others. And yes. that's why you, you, you thrive in what you do the way you do it. Okay. Yes. So but then what happened to the tourism industry? Hmm, I wonder, because <laughs> it's <laughs> Because these days it's a little bit, little bit different, right? But it, yeah, it is a little bit different today. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit different today. So you went on to do that, but then you said you you had a couple of challenges. You want to talk about those, right? In yeah, that process. Uh, yeah, it all started um, when I went to after high school. I went to study uh, in a vocational school, tourism, right. and I moved uh, to a different city and and. And we had entrepreneurship course, and we had this amazing teacher there, and and we built up a company, me and and maybe ten or eight, eight or ten, uh, my mm. student colleagues, and and mm. then we went to different cities and and learned these entrepreneurial skills and and did also some schoolwork behind it. So we got the school points, and then also the experience plus money plus network within the industry. Uh, the whole idea started from there and also because of my some of my relatives have been entrepreneurs in different uh, business fields so I've, I've seen it here and there yes. but uh, after I graduated from the vocational school and being an MBA in, in tourism industry and sales and marketing uh, uh, I moved to a bigger city uh, with my boyfriend at the time Mm -hmm. And the uh, other students, the, the my colleagues, they didn't want to grow the business to that city. I was like, what? No, it was <laughs> thriving. I was like, oh, my gosh, maybe, maybe I have to find a job. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I went to work uh, to um, different companies and work in the tourism industry in different cities all around Finland and had always these international guests and partners and experiences. And when the time came... Um, after I, I had given birth to my daughter mm -hmm. in 2012, uh, I was having, I was going back to work to the to the company that I was working with and, and doing events like big events in mm -hmm. Finland. Um, uh, they changed the company policy and they wanted to shut down the the department that I was working here in Finland and the CEO mm -hmm. that worked in Sweden at the time. They thought that okay, the Finland business in that event area is so small that we don't want to put any more input in it. So I got mm -hmm. fired, and mm -hmm. 
that was a time when I thought, <laughs> okay, may, maybe that is a sign for me that it's now my time to book my own company, mm. establish that and just just fly with my wings. Yeah. And that's that's how I became the full-time entrepreneur in 2015. And uh, uh, I thought, uh, well, what, what do I know? I know sales, I know marketing, I know mm -hmm. event industry, mm -hmm. I know tourism industry. Uh, those mm -hmm. are the skills that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's how I, I got here. And that's when I had this uh, bigger idea also that, then what can I do? I have like free hands now mm -hmm. and I, I can do anything what I want. So why mm -hmm. not do it? And, and one of the striving force for me was that when I was working with these really great companies before, but I was the employee, I was always limited by some reasons or rules or, or by their vision, by right? their vision. Yes. Probably and your I, vision was bigger than their vision. It was. Even though I was always there in the front line, working as yeah. a sales manager, or event manager, or restaurant manager, or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, there were some limitations. I thought, well, we could grow the business that way, or we could grow yeah. it that way. But then there were these boundaries, and it's like yeah. bumping there and bumping there all, all the time. And now I thought that as an entrepreneur, I yeah. have no boundaries, just my imagination. Yeah. So I, yeah. I did different things. I tried different things. And then, uh, of course, you know, as an entrepreneur, you fail, you mm -hmm. fall down to your knees, you try mm -hmm. and you fail and then you rise up and you fail and it just keeps it, going it goes. on the spiral. What, what keeps you going, honey? Because I know you talk about, you know, going down on, on, your, on your knees and then getting up again and dusting. What keeps you going? Because look how, like you have over 20 years of experience behind you that you bring to the table today. So yes. what kept you going through all your challenges and all your, like being fired from the job, being, you know, of course, starting your business and, yeah. you know, as you talk about failing and coming. Bankruptcies, all that. My mom and dad divorced, uh, losing my best friends, uh, still alive, wow. but, but breaking up uh, so our wow. relationships. And, and people can relate to all of it. Yes. So what keeps I, I, you going? It's um, it's it's my hunger for life. Mm -hmm. I've, as I told you, uh, I've always been a person that I want to see the world. Mm -hmm. I want to know what's out there, what's behind the the fence. Like <laughs> <Yes. laughs> sorry to say, I, I just want to see and experience it. And uh -huh. that's one of the reasons that why I had so many hobbies, because I wanted to experience whether it's for me or not. And mm. if it's not, then that's fine. I don't have to doubt when I'm older that, oh, what if I had done that? What would have happened? Where it would have let me? So mm -hmm. that's, that's I love I that out. outlook. I love that outlook because that I, I because I interviewed so many entrepreneurs. That's the outlook I see with people who are thriving in their business because they're not afraid to take that step. And I see that yeah. you haven't taken, you're not it's afraid scary, to take though. that step. It, yeah. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah, go it ahead, speak scary. about it. Yeah, yeah. it is, uh, I would say, fucking scary <laughs> every now and then. But, <laughs> yeah. you bet. Uh, but, but maybe because of my personality, now mm -hmm. I grew up in the in the middle of forest half of my childhood mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. in a town half of my uh, my childhood and I've seen we have a big family and uh, mm -hmm. so I, I've seen all different kind of people different kind of situations and and I think one of the reasons for the hunger for the life has been that what has been happening in from my mom and from my dad's side in our relatives and in, in our big family that Mm -hmm. We've always had the, the, some sort of vision and the courage and the, and the, the joy to live life to the fullest, mm -hmm. even though that it's been hard, mm -hmm. but we've always tried to make it a bit better, even it was our little family or within the neighborhood or something. And I kind of sucked in that <laughs> into my blood. Yeah. So. And you absorbed it all, right? <laughs> I, I absorbed it all. Yeah. And, and, yeah. That's uh, something that has kept me going, and that is something that I will, I wish to uh, to share with others that that have the joy, have the courage to step to the area that frightens you, 
mm-hmm. and because you might learn something or you might meet a person that you always wanted to meet or or you might find your passion because what you don't know you don't know mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. cannot ask what you don't know that's true that's and, so and true my my thing has been always that just go and look because you can always come go back do it yes yes and when was the last time we saw a caterpillar turning into a butterfly without coming out of that cocoon that that you know extracting themselves out of it without it you don't turn into one so i i love your quote when you said what limits me changed me (laughs) right because Mm -hmm. that was your vision was much bigger than and then you did hit a roadblock of um burnout you i remember you want to talk a little bit about that yeah because you've been on the go 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 right i mean yes because yeah. one thing that came from my family has been that okay we we just do it we just do it let's just do it mm. yes and i kind of absorbed that and and, and uh, i faced uh, well I, I saw it very closely when my one of my relatives uh, in the early 90s went into bankruptcy because of the the situation that there was and then uh, in the Finland at the time, and and uh, that sort of kind of um, was also a, a sign for me that just go and and live your life to the fullest. Doesn't matter what the situation is, and also that you have always two options: either to lay down mm-hmm. there. What my grandma always said that don't stay there, just go, get up and go. And that I has love your been, grandma. <laughs> she, she is amazing. Well, she was amazing. Yeah. And, and I had that in my mind. And she was always there tapping on my shoulder, you know, honey, keep on going. And and um, uh, whenever I faced those, you know, whenever I faced, I was face down on the ground. I was there, there down on my knees. And, and mm-hmm. I had bankruptcy. I was divorced at the same t- almost at the same time. And and I had no home because of the bankruptcy and and a small child just there with me. And, and uh, I lost my home. I lost money, even though then my, my company was up and running and, and I was getting more jobs and jobs. But mm-hmm. different kind of circumstances happened and, and I had no idea what to do. Uh, but the one thing that my grandma always said, that get up and look for other solution just go don't ask for help ask for help take it when somebody gives it yeah yes and i've been learning to say no and i've been learning to ask for help and that got me to here and that kept me going also now it doesn't matter even though that you have bankruptcy or you you are facing divorce or you're losing a child or you you're losing some other important relationship with your mm-hmm. friends or relatives or, or whatever happens the codependence or or mm-hmm. you know you you breaking down mentally and mm-hmm. i had 2009 and 2019 i had burnout because i was just going and going and going i didn't mm-hmm. stop no no one told me in a way that I understood it, maybe they've told me, but I didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. To stop mm-hmm. every now and then, mm-hmm. stop and yes. just look what's out yes. there. Yes. Even though that I yes. had been looking at the the different opportunities and and crapping into them, but sometimes yes. you just need to stop and and zip cover copy, you know, yes. or just look around and say, what I love to do is to go out in a cafe and yeah. just have a glass of champagne or have a glass of cup of tea or. or or a cup of coffee and just sit there by myself, read the paper or just watch the people going by. Yeah. I hadn't done that for years. Yeah, that that's amazing. Thank you so much for bringing that up, honey, because that's what, you know, as entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, we tend to forget sometimes there's so much focus on our business that we tend to look yeah. forget to look after or ourselves. Family. You, or family, yes, you're right, and, and people around us that need <laughs> us or we need them, vice versa, taking help from them. And that's what brought you today, thriving in your business, doing what you're doing now. So yeah. tell us about that. So from that burnout, you actually took a step back. You did an yeah. inward thinking. You recreated. You redefined. And now look at here. Yeah, so tell I, us about that. 
Yes, uh, that has been really a breakthrough. My second burnout in 2019. And yeah. uh, at the end of 2019, I was having, I was doing two different jobs. Uh, mm. uh, and I was running my company and things were going forward. And I was making bigger partnerships and, and bigger things and had this my vision. And, and everything was going kind of okay. But then uh, my business partner wasn't there. Uh, so I had to, I was like hand, hand tied uh, to different things. But so I couldn't really proceed. And then I was doing other jobs because of the, our business wasn't that f in, in the position where I wanted to be. Mm. And so I, I've always set up different goals and my goals and, and ambition is really high, maybe too <laughs> high. And, uh, and no, so so too was, high. <laughs> yeah. So I had these different kind of burnouts, uh, symptoms. And one day I remember that I was walking. Now I know that I was walking from downtown to my home. Mm -hmm. like, it's only like 20 minutes walk. And mm -hmm. in the middle of that, I remember that I, I had to stop. Uh, I was watching my, my wristwatch and, and just I looked at the time and I had no idea whether it was a day or it was in the middle of the night. Wow. And wow. then I, I was sitting down in a bench and I was like doing this. Oh, my God, that I have no idea what the time is. And I had no idea whether I was going from work to home or from home to work. Yeah, that's a, and, that's And that's I the, was there yeah. like, oh, my God. That's a clear sign of a being a, having burnt out and having, you know, completely. Wow. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing that. So then what yeah. happened? Then uh, after a while, I figured out, okay, then now, now I'm going home. Uh, and then Christmas break was coming and I was sitting in my, my dad's home with my daughter and just sipping tea. And then it hit me that, yo, woman, now you need to stop. I had two different uh, international events coming up in the next two, uh, two months and the last was supposed to be in the International Women's Day in March 2020. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm so, I must say that I'm so glad and blessed that the COVID came into mm -hmm. my life, even though that mm -hmm. it has been bad in, the, mm -hmm. in some yeah. ways. But, but for me, the world stopped and when I needed to stop. And I had mm -hmm. made the decision in 2019 Christmas time that, that in two months after the events in March, I want to do things differently. I want to stop, ask for different kind of help. I mm -hmm. want to try anything else that I haven't tried before. And I was mm -hmm. asking for energy healers. I was asking for business coach. I was asking for mental coach. And I was looking for uh, different lawyers, different uh, uh, accounting companies, uh, different partnerships. I was looking for everything. And, and then I was just Beautiful. sleeping. Yes. I took the yes. time off. And that lasted for one and a half months. Yes. And I was going yeah. through all these different emotions and things. And I would remember just uh, my daughter left for school and I was just crying at home. But yeah. of going through all that, it was really, really hard emotionally. But that mm -hmm. was the best thing that happened. Because at the mm -hmm. end of April 2020, I had all these thing, things figure out. You had figured it out. With the yes. help of these different yes. people from all over the world. Yes. Thank God yes. for the for the technology and, and virtual world. Mm -hmm. um, my business has been like this ever since. Mm -hmm. I changed it, it to a different business model, mm -hmm. and I reached out for different partners, different kind of uh, clients. Mm -hmm. And now, so tell us what your business is now. <laughs> <laughs> Talk mm -hmm. about that a bit because yeah. we're almost coming to an end. Yes, yes. Uh, um, I've always been a person who wants to help others, bring the joy, and mm -hmm. help them to go to to see the different opportunities, uh, what the life can offer to them. And mm -hmm. and because of my large global network, because of my personality of being the courageous woman there and always uh, mm -hmm. able to speak for others and, and speak for the, the things that I experience so that mm -hmm. maybe other people don't have to fall in the same, you know, holes <laughs> in the entrepreneurial life or mm -hmm. in the personal life that I've, I've fallen into. And so mm -hmm. that's why I want to share things. And, mm -hmm. and it's all kind of a 
made this circle and and pieces of the puzzle came together and and uh, I've always been helping people in different ways. So now mm -hmm. uh, I help people to find the goals. I help them to build a business strategy. I help them in a personal life to set up certain goals. And if they want to change their career, if they want mm -hmm. to grow their business, I can mm -hmm. help them. I've been through mm -hmm. a lot. Everything. And, and, yes. Yeah, yes. And in personal really. life and in business life. And, mm -hmm. and I have this amazing networks and I have this uh, very unique combination of a, uh, of skills and, and background mm -hmm. and this I can help companies yes. and especially yes, as a need. Clearly. And, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's what I do now. I help especially women mm -hmm. to to go further in their life, but then also SMEs, whether they are female or, or male founded company. Somebody is saying amazing journey. Thank you so much. Is that you, Ratna, or whoever is joining us? I know quite a few people are, but thank you so <laughs> much for that. See he, how, how relatable it is, Hane. I knew, I told you. It's, it's you do. I mean, every entrepreneur has a remarkable journey that they, and if they're willing to share, that's what makes them human. That's what makes them real. And that's what brings the focus on why you are so good at what you do. Right? You're amazing uh, at what agree. you do, honey. Right? <laughs> oh, You're amazing like at helping women. Stuff. Right? Yeah. I mean, yes. So, so take yes. the ownership, get, walk into your greatness, <laughs> and tell us, yes. right? Yeah, uh, I, I love doing what I'm doing, and I, and and I've always been there for others, and that's what I want to do, and that's how uh, because of my large network, which grows all the time, and I want to to be there for the people that I know who who I'm connecting with. Uh, yeah. It's just not like adding people here and there, but I, I really yeah. want to do consciously adding yes. yes yes because I, I believe in long-lasting relationships and and yes. meaningful en encounters and that's what i wanted to do and that's what i've been doing all through my life with my business partners with my uh, uh my clients and, and neighbors and every everything and and that's what i want want to to do and that's, that's why you're I a part of us. Yes, yes, yes is you. And that's why you are a part of our group, yeah. for sure. And that's how I'm growing my business. I have business partners in Sri Lanka, in Africa, in yeah. Europe, in in USA at the moment. And it's oh, been just wonderful. growing. All, all of this has been happening within a year. I can see you growing in Canada. Yes, <laughs> now we're in Canada. <laughs> there's Canadians and there's people from India here. Like, yes. Thank you so and they're, they're they're saying thanks for sharing that inspiring story. Yeah, it's very inspirational. I agree. I really absolutely. Hope. Yeah. Yeah. I, I and hope then, through this journey, I, I can give you some tips or or inspiration or empowerment. To, and you to are because you're journey. because there's a giveaway you're giving us. So I'm going to put that in the yes. pool. So I'm taking from every entrepreneur in that. So Canada's here too. Hey, Amy, how are you? So uh, you're giving a 45 minute freebie coaching for $250 euros. So we're going to hold on to it. We're going to put that in the pool and we're going to try and, and maximize that effect and impact for, for more people. So we're, yes. we're working on that, but thank you so much for that. I know we're a couple of minutes over, but I got yeah, so engrossed sorry. in your story and thank you so much for, for taking us on your journey. I appreciate it, but you, you've been wonderful, honey. Um, and of course we'll, we'll post this as a recording as well. So if you're joining us in recording, say hashtag recording down below when you see us. Okay. Thank you so much, honey, for appearing on our Distinguished Speaker Series. I truly appreciate that for you to be Thank opening you. up. Again. Thank you, everyone. And have a You're lovely welcome. day. Lovely spring. You too. Too. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye.